Good evening one more time. Good evening. All right, that's a little bit better. I guess we'll get better as, as the program moves along. Welcome and um, uh, to the final iteration of our Lift Every Voice lecture series uh, for the 2023 year. Amen. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to everybody who's in the house. Um, one exercise that I do at the beginning of all of these is, is to ask you to find somebody who you did not come with uh, and greet them, shake their hand, um, say hello, give them a hug, let them borrow some money. Uh, it, it requires you to get up out of your seat and to go find somebody who you didn't come here with and to give them a greeting. All right, we're getting ready for an exciting time on tonight. Um, and so, uh, again, I want to welcome you. I'm Bishop Talbert Swan II. I'm the senior pastor here at the Spring of Hope Church of God in Christ. Uh, and every year, we are thankful to our sponsors who help us to bring great people from all walks of life um, of great renown throughout the nation to come and share with us their experiences and their wisdom uh, in various fields of endeavor. And so uh, I want to thank Bay State Health. I want to thank the Irene and George E. Davis Foundation, uh, Health New England, uh, Mass Mutual, and MGM Springfield. Uh, and would you just indulge me and give a round of applause for our sponsors. <laughs> and now a word from one of our sponsors. At Bay State Health, we are compelled to be a force for good. That compassionate, spirited, and steadfast drive has helped us be the difference for you and so many others within our diverse human family. Every day, in ways big and small, we are humbled and privileged that our impactful care helps you go on to make all the difference in your own world. Together, we have the capacity to transform lives. And again, we thank Bay State and all of our sponsors. Two of the things that we make sure that we do during these series is one is to start on time because I believe um, what someone said to me many years ago that impacted me as we were waiting um, for program participants to arrive to start the program, he said, you should never punish the on time by rewarding those that are late. And so I believe in that wholeheartedly. Um, and so, and the other thing is we always bring in uh, the best in terms of our local talent uh, regarding our spoken word artists, our musical guests, uh, our host. Um, and so in each of these series, we have a, a local resident to come and to host us for the night. And today, uh, our host is Ayanna Crawford, um, who has been with us for many years uh, in Lift Every Voice lecture series. Uh, she is a mother a lifelong Springfield resident, a public schools graduate. Uh, she's a proud educator uh, in the city. Um, worked four jobs to put herself through college. Um, raised her children as a single mother and worked hard to launch her own small business. So she's an entrepreneur in her own right. Uh, she is an elected executive committee member of the Greater Springfield NAACP. Uh, she is a dedicated community advocate. She's the chief of staff of state representative Orlando Ramos. And she is a committed public servant. And so would you put your hands together and receive our host for this evening, Ayanna Crawford. Don't clap better than that. <laughs> Woo. 
I am so blessed and honored to be here. Every time I hear those things, I just think about my mother and the work that my mother did in order to be, in order for me to do the things that I'm doing. So I give homage and honor to my mother, Sylvia Wilson. And so this is family. Spring of Hope is family. Bishop, First Lady, you are family to me. I've known you all for so many years. And I'm just so honored every year to come back and not only support and host, but just to be in the audience. You know, and I'm grateful to the community for your love and your support of me in terms of the things that I do for our community. And like we all do, I see so many wonderful folks that are here that have done so many great things in our community. So I wanna give you all a clap because you deserve it. And I wanna say thank you. And so again, my name is Ayanna Crawford. Um, I am the, I'm a grandmother now. I can't believe it. So I wanna share that with you all. I'm a grandmother now. And I, this is my first time I think publicly saying that, that I'm a grandmother now. My grandson is four years old. His name is Kyron, he's in preschool and he's doing phenomenal. I see a scientist, I see a doctor, I see a lawyer and he will be cultivated. And so I thank you so much. And so at this time, brothers and sisters, we are going to do our invocation, the Black National Anthem at this time. Oh, 
you all sounded wonderful. <laughs> So again, those of you that are just joining us, again, we say welcome. This is our uh, last installment of Lift Every Voice and Sing lecture series, which we're very humbled to see all of you on tonight. We know that you could be anywhere else on tonight and you've chosen to be here with us. And so we wanna thank you on behalf of the Bishop of this house, First Lady, and the committee for Lift Every Voice. We wanna say, Welcome, welcome, and welcome. And so we have a wonderful program set up for everyone on today. We will have some spoken word, some singing, and of course our keynote speaker. And throughout the evening, those of you that know me know that I'm always about our black history, right? And so I either think of a question or pose a question for you all to answer. And so, like tonight, I will be doing that as well. And so make sure you have, as, I, as a former educator, make sure you have your thinking caps on on tonight because I will be asking some questions. Yeah. And so we wanna make sure that we are getting the right answer. All right, so how's everyone doing? Good? All right, thank you again for being here on tonight. And so we have our first uh, speaker that's gonna come up. We have a spoken word that is going to be done and is Mr. Aaron St. Louis. Is he here on tonight? Uh, okay. So, yep. So on tonight we have the famous, and you all know him, okay? He's at everybody's location. He's doing a phenomenal things in our community. He was, um, he is the host of the, his show on WTCC. He's, he's actually in the schools now, and he just does a phenomenal job, and he's always here with us for the spoken word. And so without further ado, let us bring up our brother, Brother Daryl Moss. up. I'm like, well, okay. I see. <laughs> all right, man, everybody doing all right? Yeah. Used to come in in February, yeah. but it's black history every day, right? That's right. Let me hear everybody say it's black history every day. There we go. All right, like you said, my name is D Moss. Uh, my mama called me Daryl, so bear with me. Actually, I was supposed to sing a hook on this. But go ahead, just start it from there, Malay, and just walk your way up. If I'm good, I'm saying I ain't fine. See, we're running out of truth like we're running out of time. Black leaders masquerading like coon straight buffoon plantation style. Instance miles to, and quick to acquiesce what little space we have. Selling out our communities with black families up for grabs. Straight to the auction block, they're selling our souls, holes for a system that never worked in our favor and wasn't designed for us. Teaching and preaching in politics we trust while being betrayed. Played like pawns on a chess game, we're losing on purpose for no purpose at all. These are trying times and this struggle is real. So ask me how I feel, I ain't never fine. So we're running out of truth, like we're running out of time. Everybody's stressing that the blessing is in the vote. 
but you never hear them promote getting involved and being in a position to be voted for. Never talking about the door to freedom being equity and not equality. How do you talk about quality of life and saving lives without talking dollars and cents and what makes sense is economic development. New businesses and a sound economic foundation, no nation was ever built on social service and government programs. So if you really give a darn preacher, preacher and politician, show the people the proof. So we're running out of time like we're running out of truth. Leaders, we need some vision and a plan. And this ain't nothing new. Time is of the essence and we seem to be losing while certain folks are choosing who moves forward at our community's expense. What is the expense when leadership has already sold its soul? Let's give it up for Daryl Moss and Malay. Yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Woo. Let's give them another round of applause. I'm sorry. Woo. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Daryl Moss and Malay, for that beautiful, beautiful rendition. We so appreciate both of you. Yes, and I want to acknowledge a few folks in our audience on tonight. I think it's, um, it's important that we do that. I want to acknowledge um, Brother Keaton. Brother Keaton, that's right. I know you looking at me like, mm -mm. yes, I want to acknowledge you because I believe that what you're getting ready to do or what you're, get, you're doing He's running for office, brothers and sisters. And so he's running for city council at large. And so it's important that we get out and we vote for those people that stand up, that have been standing up for us. And he is one of those that have been doing the work. So he didn't just come Johnny B. Lately right now because he wants to run. He's been doing the work. Those are the people that we need to see in office that understand our plight and understand where we're going. So it's important that we do that. You have my support. Amen. And I would also like to say uh, Ramadan Mubarak. This is the holy month of Ramadan for the Muslims in our community. And I wanna say that we also need to acknowledge these months, we know that we just did Passover and of course um, the Easter. And so we wanna acknowledge the holy days or the holy months during this month. And so we wanna say uh, again, happy Easter, Ramadan Mubarak, and make sure that we are acknowledging those spiritual rituals that we all uh, are accustomed to or practice. It is important that we show up and we have space for everyone's, um, yes ma'am, everyone's uh, religious um, faith. And so whatever you choose for you and your family. So I wanna give space and honor and homage in this house that is a, a, a multitude of multicultural, I believe, of voices that are here on tonight. And so that's important. Amen, thank you so much. And I would also like to acknowledge one of our business owners in our city, Ms. Z Johnson. She is always available to us. She always is here for us. And whenever we have an event, whenever we're doing something, she either supports or she's also donating her books. And so please find yourself supporting her. Please find yourself working to help her sustain her business in our community, it is important. So if you have not gone to her uh, bookstore, please do so. She's open on the weekends, and we know because of the COVID and everything, she's sort of uh, just been on the weekends, and please feel free to talk to her after uh, this evening's over. All right, is that all right, brothers and sisters? Yes. Is that all right uh, that I do that? Because it's important. 
And if there's and everyone else in here, you all are valuable and important. So I want you to just raise your hand and say, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, I'm here. And I also need to be recognized as well. Okay, you're here. And so we want to thank you so much for being here. And so we're going to bring back number two. Did you know? <laughs> you got something else for us? <laughs> we're going to come. We're going to come back around. So just just be prepared. Just be prepared. All right. This is family, y'all. This is family. <laughs> All right, our music selection. Are you all here on tonight? K. Sam. Yes. All right. Mr. K. Sam, this is my first time in the same room as you. And I want to say I hear so many wonderful things about you. And so I want to say thank you so much for being here. So at this time, we're going to bring up Mr. K. Sam's. How y'all doing today? Lift every voice. Let's give a wonderful applause again for D. Moss and Miss Swan, Bishop Swine and Miss Swine here to do what they do. I love y'all so much. I love doing this. Brother Muhammad, how you doing? <laughs> One more time for the brother Andrew Keaton running for office. Y'all better go vote for that brother. Please do, please do. And if y'all don't know, D. Moss got a pro uh, project coming out. He didn't want me to tell y'all that, but uh, he got a project coming out. So. Yeah, y'all give him a round of, round of applause for that. I tell you, it's a good project, too. But y'all know me. I like to have a good time. And how many woke up this morning refreshed? Did God wake you up this morning refreshed? Y'all had problems yesterday, but you woke up this morning refreshed. Wasn't even worried about it. Am I correct? How you doing? This brother, I see him taking pictures everywhere. But I ain't seen my picture nowhere yet. I'm going to start charging you, bro. <laughs> but we're going to keep it refreshed today. This lift up every voice, okay? So you can't lift up every voice. We got to stay refreshed every day. In order to be refreshed every day, you got to pray to God. Am I correct? Amen, amen. My son back there, so y'all might see him roll up here sooner or later. He don't like to stay off stage. Can you hit me with the music, please? Y'all better put your hands together. I saw you move. There you go. Come on. Get your hands together like this. Let's go. Refreshing the crops at harvest time. Refreshing the course every day that I wake up. It's God's time. It's God's line. That I rock, you know it's spirit line. I learn the flesh. Can't do it without the spirit, right? I jump ship, take a dip into his pool of forgiveness. Still was cool is why you get this. I came from West Tampa ghetto. Move across the town to the bend with the king high fellow. God still had his hand on the kiddo. Still hearing the scripture from the pastor whole hood, though. Goes to show in this world, he's smoking sticks, no resisting it. Can't fight the fear to hear him seeing it. I'm just a brother from the block trying to iterate it. So it's he can take your hands and we can all elevate it, celebrate it. So we step into the light, so everybody can see that God got you quick looking yeah, for the right. Watch his word, his daily works reminds me what his love is worth. Come on, can't hear y'all. See how love when he shows me. He keep me refreshed. My walk, my talk, my way of thinking change me because it's grace now. See, I love when it shows me. Refreshing the cycle, speaking tongues. What? Every time we do, it's a lesson to be learned. Yeah. Back to earth, no more worries or concerns no. about what the devil's gonna do when they come. come he got come. God in his heart through his face. Right. So fear is not an option when they teach in Jesus' name. Not no. only are they after your soul and your brain, yep. they after your seeds, cutting the tree from the roots. Dear God, True. they don't get it yet. Genetics is where it's at. They know the real royalty, a history of being black, and knowing the real facts. The king seems way back. I think this is not his good. With the gold raps, but they too we stand out. So the whole now, like John Lewis said, we going for it, not going back. We blessing they hate that. The first he made that, and they keep wondering why is that cause he keep it refresh. Come on, y'all, put your hands up like
Like I said, he woke you up this morning and made you refresh. Am I correct? Can I get an amen? I can't hear y'all. Can I get an amen? If you feel the right fresh right now, say, I'm refreshed. He just changing everything around. He the bishop. He can do that, can't he? Thank y'all so much. I'll be back, they say. All right, let's give it up again for Case Sams. I refresh, refresh, refresh. <laughs> I refresh. No, <laughs> I always wanted to do that. <laughs> All right, well again, thank you so much, Case Sams, for that beautiful, beautiful song. I felt so inspired. Yes, let's give him another round of applause. And so I wanna also, those of you that have just joined us, again, welcome, welcome to the last installment of this year, 2023, of Lift Every Voice Lecture Series. So thank you so much for being here on tonight with us. And so at this time, we have a portion of our program that we do the moment of sharing. And so I'm gonna bring Bishop back up so he can do this portion for us. Let's bring, our, bring Bishop back up. Round of applause for D Moss. <laughs> Round of applause for K Sam. Round of applause for our speaker, Dr. Vicki Irvin, being in the house. Round of applause for Ayana. Now give yourselves a round of applause. Period of sharing. Y'all know what that is, right? Yeah, so you can tell when it get quiet. When <laughs> Y'all know exactly what that is. That's the time where we come and we ask that you would share a gift, a love token, a, uh, a donation um, um, to the ministry um, in terms of whatever God places on your heart. Those of you who can share a $20 gift, uh, we'd ask that you do that. And I know that even if you don't have it, somebody close to you got it. Matter of fact, <laughs> just look at somebody who looked like they worth more than $20 and say, neighbor, come on, talk to them. Go on, say, neighbor, let me hold $20 till I get my check next week. <laughs> but whatever your gift is, whatever your gift is, uh, we are certainly appreciative uh, for whatever you want to share with us. And so I'm going to ask that you would stand um, at this time, I'm not going to ask you to walk. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do is to pass your gifts to the center aisle uh, and then watch the person on the end of the aisle. Make sure that they don't have to go to the restroom real quick. Uh, 
anywhere and just make sure that your money makes it into the pan. If you want to give it electronically, you can give it through Cash App. The Cash App is dollar sign Spring of Hope, dollar sign Spring of Hope. You can also give through PayPal or Givelify, Givelify, Spring of Hope Church of God in Christ, Springfield, Massachusetts. You can go to our website, 413hope.org, and click the online giving link, and you can give through that method. But whatever way you give, give it cheerfully, because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We pray that you would bless some 30, 60, even as much as 100-fold according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. We're giving at this time. Watch your money now. Watch it. Make sure it makes it to the end. Some folks sitting down real quick. All right. God bless you. All right. I thought. I hope you guys gave, 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 gave. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Bishop, for coming. And at this time, I'm going to do what we what we said earlier about the Black History um, quiz or a question. So get your thinking caps on. Okay, this is my classroom on tonight. <laughs> you all are my students <laughs> tonight. And so our first question is going to be, let's see. All right. And this one is gonna be an easy one, all right? We most recently, this has been a historical moment for these United States to um, confirm the first black Supreme Court justice. What was her name? Black female. Uh, what? Uh, raise our hands. Hello, this is, remember, this is my classroom. We raise our hands. You know, we don't shout out, right? Okay, so if you think you have the answer, go ahead and raise your hand. Yes? Katanji Brown. Katanji Brown, yes, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Hmm? All right, thank you so much. I will come back with another question later on, but at this time, I'd like to bring up our musical selection again, Mr. K. Sams. Are you ready for us? All right. Let's give it up for Mr. K. Sams. I'm going to call Miss Warren on stage this time. Why not? How y'all doing again? I ain't gonna tell y'all to get up this time. I ain't gonna y'all can enjoy it from where you at, you know. But we finna do some freedom. Y'all heard freedom ain't free from my brother D Moss. Give him another round of applause for that song. That's one of his singles coming out. I'm gonna keep saying it, D. You know, that's one of the singles coming out. So, but we're gonna stay on that of freedom because lift up every voice, you have to be free to do that. You know, if you trapped in your mind or <clears throat> somebody or something is keeping you trapped in your mind, you're not free. If they can change your whole perspective when they walk in the room, <laughs> they got you prison for the rest of their life. You know, and you're not giving everything to God and let him handle your battles for you. So, we finna be free for a minute. At least for three minutes and some seconds. Can you hit me, please? Freedom. Freedom. The right to think independently, coexist without way, stipulation, free of indoctrination, the ability to enjoy human rights without prejudice and discrimination. Freedom, freedom safe freedom. and protected against illegal search and seizure, the right to protest without arrest, the right to speak my mind, to gather with others of my own kind, whether they be blue or Feel black or green or white. Freedom, freedom, freedom grants me the right, the right to be whatever God gives me the ability to be. I like this. You say you come, want, on, come on, come on. Put your hands together you when you want. sit down. Let's go. Do you really want freedom? You can't say something or give it to the civil platter Just cause it wasn't given to you in a way that it really matters You gotta get up and get your freedom Don't let the man hold you down from your plan, nor he defeated Well educated and well dressed Top top ladies are quashed, they jealous 
it with God bless So put in the test that the people see the God in you Bringing out the heart in his brother here believe you Words of the past that fall for you Now put your being on the couch and trusting the next brother Stop it dropping your gift from letting out of possessing And on to the next brother or sister who won't suffer Stop the high power bloodshed Stop being a part of the problem to help the children of the world get fed With the tools from God knowing always how to beat him So get up, do something if you really want Come on, come on, come on, come on. From negative thinking, freedom from bills drowning and sinking, freedom from doubt myself. If I'm ever gonna make it, freedom from making excuses and me reaching my potential, freedom from moving up and me changing residential, freedom from kicking myself and me making life mistakes, freedom from thought with God and He stand me in the face, freedom from giving cricket man the power over me, freedom not knowing God and the powers that be. But now we got a hold of me. Change of my breath, let like go of me. Freedom for conviction that this is a race and the rich and the rich and the haters that going through crazy messes that dark days on me. Generation for generation, race color of free. But what they got to show the real way with freedom me. Lord leaders, they're born entrepreneur. So let God make you free. Ain't nothing can't hold you. So say it loud, real loud. I'm free with God. I'm proud. Come on, come on, come on. Say it loud, real loud. I'm free with God. I'm proud. That's my son. Come on, the reference. Say it loud, real loud. How's everybody doing out there? Yeah. Yes, good, good. Free, Free. that's right. <laughs> All right, let's do another Black History trivia. The, this question I think will go to possibly an educator. You might know this one. So, what is the name of the famous spider often spoken about in African stories? Ooh, or our bookstore owner. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Let's give her a round of applause. Huh? Anansi the spider? The answer was Anansi the spider. Anansi. It's A-N-A-N-S-I. All right. One more question. Uh, let's see. I think you guys will know this one. Oh, name three African countries. Easy enough, right? We know our black history. Don't all shout at once. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Daryl. Senegal, Ghana, Nigeria, Haiti. Uh, 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 don't let, wait, 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 wait. Let him finish. Let him finish. 
We have to encourage our students because he was on a roll. And so give him a moment. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Yes, you did. Thank you. All right, let's give him a round of applause. All right, I'm going to give you one more question. All right, Queen Nefertiri was queen of what country? Queen Nefertiri was queen of what country? Queen Nefertiri was queen of what country? Now, this is one that I remember growing up as a child. So anyone that's my age, we should know this. Or maybe not. <laughs> so do you want me to give you the answer? All right. Now, when I tell you the answer, you're going to say, ah, oh, I knew that. Egypt. <laughs> Egypt. Egypt. So let us, let us brush up, right, on our African history, right? Let us do that. Yes, yes. And let us be more astute, right? Because these questions are fundamental, and some of them we should, we should already know. But you did a great job. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> All right. So at this time, um, this is family. And again, welcome those of you that have just joined us. We thank you for being here. We're going to have our brother Daryl come back up and give us another spoken word. We just love Brother Daryl, don't we? Let's give him a round of applause. He is so inspiring. He just has so much available for us, and he's amazing, and we just, we just want to hear you again. <laughs> Uh-oh. I uh, see. I only came prepared to do one. My memory ain't all that good, so I gotta read off my phone, right? That's all right. Um, I ain't know. Okay, give me a second. Make sure I'm doing it right. This right here is a, is a love letter to black women. Is that cool? Yes. All right. Let's see if I can get it right. I've never shared this one in public, so I hope y'all like it. <laughs> I wish that I could wish for my sisters black. I wish that I could go back to where it all began, erase the sin of what appeared on our shores. Wish I could reassure more and more of those I adore that you are the reason why we still exist. I wish I could eradicate the witch who tries to convince you to believe that I leave you when you need me most. I wish I could sink the boat that stole you and tries to steal you daily. So I know you're ailing, failing, feeling that you're failing in your attempts of keeping your man. So I think, therefore, I still am your man. From your hips and thighs to your natural hair and your eyes, I love you and I ain't leaving. See, there's no thieving in the temple of our reality. This is a commitment from back when it to commitment that I would fight for you, be a light to you against the dark, be the truth to their lie, the right to their wrong. Every song I sing, every poem I write, every speech I recite is in defense of you. Sister to my brother, daughter of my mother, lover to my father, I honor you with honesty. The only certainty that is real I've consciously chosen the red pill, for you are the truth of my reality, and she is the blissful ignorance of illusion. To eradicate any confusion, I state there never was an option to choose. A blue pill meant I lose from the beginning. I was born winning, evolving from the melanin of my mother, the secret that hung from the tree bearing strange fruit, the root of the voodoo. I jumped that broom with you until our legacy is no longer stolen, our faith no longer broken, our love no longer token symbols of undeciphered hieroglyphics. We are God's mathematics. More than the one plus one equating the two, we are millions stronger than yesterday. Daughter of Asada and Zynga made me that way. And Amazon, amazing, they wonder. Fantasize about the wonder women who raise their babies to grow their armies. Your very existence is alarming. So ring the alarms and jingle the bells, sound the horns. Africa is still where we left it, in the souls of our sisters. Black, thank you. Yes. Woo, let's give it up for Daryl Moss. First time in public reciting that one. We thank you so much for sharing it here on tonight. We thank you so much. What a beautiful, beautiful piece. Yes, that's right. We do, right, black women? Right? We feel loved? That's right. All right. Well, this is a moment where I have to exit. 
Um, it has been wonderful sharing at this time with you as your host for on tonight. Uh, we are getting ready, and so anticipate our uh, keynote speaker, and so Bishop is going to introduce her to all of us. But again, I thank you so very much for having this moment with you all, and um, have a wonderful evening. Bishop? All right, let's give Ayana another round of applause. Y'all ready to hear our speaker tonight? Yeah. All right. Vicki Irvin built her first company into a million dollar business in 12 months. She started her next venture mentoring women business owners and those aspiring, which has quickly become one of the most successful and popular coaching programs for entrepreneurs and for those aspiring. She's coached over 2,000 people on how to increase their own wealth, boost their business, and employ marketing strategies that few have been exposed to. She's got great success in a coaching practice that was built on her sense of marketing that keeps her events selling out year after year. She has gained national prominence and prior to even becoming nationally known for her marketing and business prowess, she had a successful career in human resources. She is a Springfield native that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Graduated from school here. As a matter of fact, she went to school with Ayana yes. uh, right here in Springfield. She is a graduate of American International College holds a master's degree in human resource development. Uh, she was awarded an honorary doctorate of humane letters in philosophy. Uh, she built um, her business, her superwoman lifestyle brand to include her own line of cosmetics, her own superwoman lifestyle fitness and boot camps. She launched her own cosmetic line with R&B singer and diva Shante Moore as the celebrity face and the brand ambassador. Uh, I can go on and on, but she's an actress. She is uh, a television host. She's been featured in Millionaire Blueprint Magazine, Essence, CNN's, HLN, Prime News, USA Today, Lifetime TV, Bloomberg's Radio, Essence. <sighs> and the list goes on. She's a co-author of an Amazon bestseller, um, she also hosts the Superwoman Lifestyle TV, uh, and she is here tonight to inspire us and to challenge us and give us the blueprint to black entrepreneurship. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and enemies, everybody in the building, would you stand to your feet and put your hands together for our speaker tonight, Dr. Vicki Irvin. Thank you so much. I want to thank the bishop and his beautiful wife for inviting me to speak in my hometown. I don't get the opportunity to do this often, so it's very special to me. Also special to me is that my mom, who is 90 years old, is here. <laughs> raise your hand, mom. Raise your hand, mother. Mother, raise your hand. <laughs> she doesn't like anyone to tell her age, even at 90, so, you know, 90, 90 years old. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> what a blessing, right? What a blessing. So yes, I um, grew up in the streets of Springfield and when people saw that I was coming to speak at the church, they said, well, do they know how you were in the streets of Springfield? Because I was a terror in the streets of Springfield, but I got everything together, <laughs> as we all have, right, right? So the bishop wanted me to talk about the blueprint for black entrepreneurship. And I talk about entrepreneurship all the time, but you know, the bishop's gonna make everything about being blackity black, 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 black. Because that's what we do, as we should, right? So I'm gonna talk about some lessons that I learned being a black entrepreneur towards the end. But not knowing where everyone was as far as business goes, I wanted to cover a topic that's kind of general, 
um, that can apply to everyone. So we're going to talk about branding today. Branding your business. And I know you've heard a lot about branding your business. There's a lot of misinformation, a lot of ideas floating around. So I want to talk from the standpoint of things that I've actually done that have worked for me and that are proven things that have worked for other people. A lot of people teach business when they don't even have a business themselves. Yeah. So I think I like to teach by example yeah. of things that I found out worked or did not work. And I think that's the best way to teach people by leading by example and things that I've done to show you kind of you know, what I kind of figured out, what I gave to my clients as well. Is that all right with everybody? Yes. Okay, okay. All right, all right. So we're going to talk about what a brand is and is not, how to set up a brand that you can actually monetize, because business is about making money, people. Okay, it's about making money. A lot of people have a hard time with that. But business is about making money. And how to take an unpopular position in the market. I'm going to touch on that as well. How to become an authority in your industry, and again, I really want to focus on what will make your brand the most money. Do we have any business owners here right now? Okay. Starting. Starting. Anyone thinking about it? Okay. And so people are seasoned all over the board. That's great. Okay, that's going to work for us then. All right. So as Bishop said, I've done a lot of th cool things, which is great. Um, I've actually rebranded my business, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. I started off with the Superwoman Lifestyle Movement, but guess what it is now? It's called Black Woman Lifestyle. Yay. Yes, because yeah, that's what it's about. And I've been a business consultant since about 2006, so I've been an entrepreneur since 2006. Um, I've created million-dollar businesses and brands for myself and for my clients. I'm a consultant, an author, a marketing expert, and a business owner. And so my goal for you today is to give you some real data, like I said, from personal experience of things that actually worked, show you what brought me some wins, and how to shortcut the process. Because I can you know, tell you things that actually work. You don't have to like, go through the bumps and bruises like other people have to do. So I like to have fun. I'm deviating a little bit from my normal style. I, used, I like to walk all over the place as well. I'm used to doing a three-day live event that I've done for many, many years called the Extreme Women Entrepreneurs event. And I walk all over the place, so it's like, I gotta be still here, but we gonna make it. So good branding will get you noticed, okay? Branding is about attracting opportunity to you. Some of the um, reasons why I know good branding will get you noticed is as Bishop kind of mentioned, I had the honor of being you know, featured in several magazines, and to me that's just an idea of when you have a good brand, how people will find you and contact you. That's kind of how you know things are working for you. You start to get opportunity starts to come to you. You're attracting opportunity. And that's what branding is about. It's about attracting opportunity to you, OK? So for the purposes of the training, like I said, I'm going to show you some stuff later that I've done to support my own brand. And I have an authority position with my brand. There's different positions that you can take in a market when you're branding yourself. I personally have chosen an authority and expert position. All right? And when I give you these examples, it's not so much to talk about myself, but I'm trying to give you real life examples of what I've done. Because again, I don't like to teach from just theory or things that I've Googled. I want to tell you real life experience of things that I've actually accomplished and done. So the reality is most people don't have a brand that's actually working for them. Okay? You try to come up with these branding things, but it's, a lot of times it doesn't work. And most people focus on, when you get into business, what do most people do? They set up their LLC, right? You get your tax ID number. You're all excited. You're like, I got my tax ID number. And then what do you do? You come up with a catchy business name and a catchy tagline. Yeah. And then you really think you're making it, right? Yeah. I got my tagline. Yes, right? You do this color coordination of your website and your business cards. Yeah. And then you really think you're on your way, right? right? All these things going on. And then you spend time trying to appeal to everyone, trying to get everybody to love you and buy from you, right? Doesn't work that way. And following what everyone else in your market and your industry is doing, you don't want to do that either, OK? So these are some of the things that people think branding is. It's about the tagline and the, and the logo and all that stuff. And you know, the, the reality is, how many of you have ever opened up your wallet or your purse and purchased something because you like somebody's logo? Right? OK? But people focus on those things. Those are the wrong things to focus on. And nobody can just wave a magic wand and like brand you. It doesn't work that way. It's not that simple. Um, and creating a brand won't automatically have people and clients knocking down your door either. There's more to it. It's really, really deep and intricate, but I'm going to give you like a quick and dirty on it. So a brand is a symbol of what you offer, how you offer it, and what you stand for unapologetically yeah. that attracts the perfect prospect, which is someone who's thinking about possibly buying from you, a lead or a client or customer that you turn into a buyer, okay? So some common branding mistakes that I see. 
People who change their brand every other week or month. <laughs> I call those branding junkies. And as entrepreneurs, what do you do? Entrepreneurs, your mind's always going, right? Yeah. And so you always got a new idea. You wake up, I got a new idea. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be the this, I'm gonna be the that. Branding junkies, right? We don't wanna do that. Because if you're brand hopping all the time, you're confusing your market, right? And confused people will not buy from you, right? You're sending the message that you're not very established and you're very indecisive, and people wanna buy from people that they know, they like, they trust, and they feel confident in. But if they see you switching up who you are every other week, they're like, oh, they, they're confused, right? And they're not gonna buy from you. So thinking those taglines and logos are it, making decisions from all those things that are just like semantic, it, it, that stuff doesn't work. And the other thing is not being authentic to who you are, okay? Um, and we've all done it. You get into business and you see other people that you like the way they move and they like the way they do their business and you wanna be like them and you try it, but it's not you. And when you're an entrepreneur and you're a business owner, you wanna do something that you feel good about, right? You want things to be authentic. When you're selling yourself, you're selling your brand, you wanna feel good about what you're doing. And so trying to emulate or be somebody else, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Crowded markets and competition. Most of us have a gazillion people in business doing what we do, right? Being the first or only person to do something is very rare, like an Amazon. That's very rare. So the reality is most of us, when we get in business, there's already gonna be a bunch of people doing what we do, but you don't need to worry about that. There are billions of people in the world and no one business can service them all. That's why there's a McDonald's here and a Burger King here. Okay? You only need a small amount of clients to make your money. So don't worry about a crowded market. All right? And that's why the competition doesn't matter. But that's why a good brand can be gold in helping you to distinguish yourself from those other businesses and people doing exactly what you do. That's why branding is important. Those are the reasons why branding is important, to help distinguish you from everyone else doing what you do. So here are some clues that your branding may be off because I know a lot of people probably go to like networking events, business networking events, and you probably dread when people walk up to you and ask what you do. Oh God, please don't let them come and ask me what I do because you don't exactly know what to say. So are people always asking you to explain exactly what you do? And after you tell them, are they kind of looking at you like, because they don't get it, right? Are they still unclear? Do people tell you that they are confused? Are you confused? <laughs> I mean, are you even able to clearly articulate what you do to people? And it sounds simple, but it's hard to do sometimes. So you have to be crystal clear on who you are, what you do, what you offer, and the transformation that you can provide to your clients or customers. So it's about messaging and positioning yourself. What is going to identify your product or service and what position will you take in the market? How are you gonna to decide to take a position in the market? And what's the big message that you become known for? You wanna become known for one big message and these, this common theme that you want people to equate you with, okay? So think about what your big message can be. And who precisely, this is important, will your message resonate with? Because it's not gonna be everybody. So proper messaging to the right market is a must. Because you can have a great message but if you're talking to the wrong people, they're never gonna buy from you. So those two things have to align all the time. All right, so I'll say it again. Proper messaging to the right market or potential client is a must. Okay, everybody following me? All right. So you also have to decide what are you going to be for and what are you going to be against? What are you gonna stand for? So for me as a business consultant, I'm in a, I'm in a crowded market of a bunch of coaches, business coaches, coaches teaching all types of stuff. So as a business consultant, I've always positioned myself in the market as someone who teaches the hardcore income generating skill sets. And I work with mostly women. So what am I against? I'm against the coaches who teach purpose and passion all the time. That's who I kind of made my enemy. <laughs> all right, because you kind of have to do that. So for me, there's a lot of business owners who want to learn how to generate income in their business, but because those are harder skills to learn sometimes, they rather keep focusing on the motivational stuff and the purpose and passion. And so when I'm marketing my business or to fill my events or to sell my programs, I'm going against the people teaching purpose and passion. There's nothing wrong with it, and you can do that, but it can't be all you do. 
So I'm looking for the people who have gone to a million purpose and passion events and gone to a million motivational events who still aren't making money. And they're finally like, you know what? I spent all this money here in motivational messages. I need to learn some real skills on how to go to my computer and do something to, to get some money in the bank. So that's how I position myself. I, I position myself as the hardcore skill sets to make money versus pur purpose and passion. So that's what I'm for and that's what I'm against. And you have to think about that as well. What are you for and what are you against? And don't be afraid to do it. That helps make your message crystal clear and that helps make the right people find you and know exactly what you do. And you can't be afraid to tick some people off because it's going to happen anyway. It's impossible, impossible for everyone to like you or like what you're offering or your business. Impossible. And a lot of people twist themselves in knots trying to get, be for everybody. You can't be for everybody. OK? So who can you tick off? <laughs> because doing so solidifies your position and it makes it crystal clear so that you only attract the right people and better clients or customers, because all clients and customers are not created equal. If you've had some clients and customers, you have the ones you like to work with and the ones you would like to get rid of, right? And correct branding and marketing position will help you get more of those clients that you like to work with, OK? Because they're all, they're just not equal. They're just not. So I have, um, in my day, <laughs> ticked a lot of people off. So here's one of the points where I'm going to give you some examples. I had a real estate investing program back in 2006, and I had just learned how to invest in real estate. And I decided to market myself as the real estate investing queen, okay? And there were people in my area, I live in the Washington, D.C. area, there were people in my area who'd been teaching real estate investing for years. I learned how to do it, and I called myself the queen. So when people had to decide who they wanted to go learn real estate investing from, they wanted to come see the queen, okay? Wouldn't you rather learn how to invest in real estate from the queen, <laughs> right? So that's branding, and that's positioning myself differently. And those investors in my area were big mad. They were mad. They're like, who does she think she is? Da, 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 da. We're teaching the same thing. I just know how to outmarket you. I know how to outbrand you. I know how to outposition you. All right? So that's what I did with the real estate investing. Because you have to stand out in a crowded market. There are a million people teaching real estate investing in my area. Got to put some spice on it, you know? So that's how you position yourself differently from other people, and that's how you help your brand to stand out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Let's use the um, bishop as an example. Now, the bishop is uh, going in on the people, honey, all the time. <laughs> on Twitter, on Facebook on Instagram, and he doesn't hold back, right? And there are people who love him, and there are people who do not love him. <laughs> he's ruffling feathers. He's getting cease and desist letters. <laughs> he's firing folks up. But guess what? He's not concerned with that. He's unapologetically who he is, and he's attracting people who like his style and his message, and he's not worrying about the other people who do not like him. There's people saying, oh, I can't believe a man of God talks like that. Right. You know, right? I can't believe. <laughs> Certainly he couldn't be a man of God. But that's not his audience. That's not who he's going after. He's not trying to tone himself down to please all those other people. Right? He's pushing his brand and his way of delivering his message. And he's doing his work. And he's building his own following that loves his style. And that's all you have to concern yourself with. Right? But there's a lot of people in his position who, who wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. And they're like, I can't talk that way. I'm trying to, um, I need to appeal to everybody, so let me tone it down. And at that point, if he did that, if Bishop did that, he wouldn't be authentic to who he is. Right? So the reason why he's able to look everyone in the eye and do what he does is because he feels good about what he's doing. He's authentically being himself. Right? And he's not worried about all that other stuff. So he's a great example of someone who has taken a different position in the market, a different position, and it works for him. And unfortunately, all of these things are how um, y'all friend Donald Trump won the election. He focused on a specific segment of the market and designed a message that would excite them. Unfortunately, it was racism, us versus them, but he took an unpopular position that nobody thought would work because who was doing what he was doing, right? 
And he ticked off a whole lot of people, but he galvanized a whole bunch of other people who absolutely loved it, who loved it, okay? And he understood that. He understood. He knows branding and marketing. That's one thing that the does know. Okay? So disgusting as it is, and this is an example of how you can speak to certain people only in their language and get them on your bus. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Another good example is Planet Fitness. When Planet Fitness came out, they did something brilliant in the market. Um, they aligned themselves with a very specific market. Planet Fitness, as everyone I know has heard of it, but it's a gym that came out that catered to people who are intimidated by going to regular gyms, okay? More regular mainstream gyms. These are the people who are really reluctant to walk in the door, um, feeling self-conscious, knowing they need to be there, but feeling self-conscious because look at all these people in here in shape, throwing these weights around, maybe not even knowing how to use the equipment. People just acting a fool up at a gym, gallons, gallons, drinking gallons of water, slamming stuff down, grunting. And so they, people who were intimidated saw these gyms as a place where there would be people in great shape, they'd be walking around with their chest puffed out. So when people wanted to sign up to a gym and consider going to a gym like that, they were too scared. And Planet Fitness understood that there's a segment of the market who's intimidated by mainstream gyms. So we're gonna create a safe space for them, right? So they created this whole culture and mentality that you can come to our gym and you don't have to worry about any of that because we're gonna ring the bell if we hear someone slamming the weights. So we're gonna get them out of here. We don't let people walk around with gallon jugs, okay? You can go to this gym and you don't have to worry about anything. We're not judging you, no judgment zone. They push that, that's their language. People are here to work out quietly and mind their business, okay? So people who go to Planet Fitness, they're just not allowed to do what they do in those other gyms. And, and it was brilliant because you, when you think of fitness, people are always like, you got to go hard, you got to go hard, you got to go hard. And they were like, no, you don't have to go hard. You can come here and just do your thing. In fact, we're going to have a pizza night. Pizza at the gym? Candy on the counter? Who would have thought that that would have worked? And it worked. And it worked because at $10 a month. Exactly. And some of those uh, meatheads are in there too for that $10 a month as well. So that's a great example of how you just don't come out with another gym like all the rest. You come up with a different culture, a different mentality, a different way of doing things that speaks to a specific segment of the market who is experiencing these feelings of fear of going into a regular gym. And you brand yourself that way and look what they were able to do. Okay, so I like to use that as another example. And Planet Fitness didn't care about the people that they turned off with that culture, because there were a lot of people saying, I don't understand that. You know, if you're, if you're here to lose weight and get in shape, like, why are you letting people eat pizza? Da, da. They didn't care about any of that. They knew they were going to get some pushback, but they didn't care, because they only need enough people to fill their gyms up. Yeah. Again, they're not trying to market to what? Everybody. They're not trying to be a gym for everybody. They made it crystal clear who they were for. And that's what branding and positioning and your messaging is all about in the market, OK? So you want a brand that commands top dollars. So you, want, you should be able to monetize your brand or it's pointless. It's pointless. The goal is to be profitable in business, unapologetically profitable in business, not giving all your stuff away for free, OK? So everyone wants to be able to charge more for their products or services, right? You, you, sometimes you don't know what to charge. You feel like, oh, if I, if I charge too much, no one's going to want to work with me. It's not true if you do things the right way. Um, you have to have things that support having higher prices in place, okay? It has to be supported. So there's various positions that you can take when you're establishing your brand. And I can't cover them all today. That's why I said I, would, I will talk about the one that I took for myself as a business consultant. And I took a celebrity authority position in the market. And again, it's just one position, but it's a good one. So I'm going to give you some examples of things that I've done using that particular positioning. So when prospects or clients who wanted to work with me on business co coaching would come into my fold, I would try to give them immediate value and educate them immediately, just giving them stuff for free, just to show them that I know what I'm talking about, make them feel good, make them see what I'm about. And then they begin to view you as an expert. I get what she's saying. That makes sense, this, that, or the other. And one of the main reasons why I make my clients write books, okay, I make all my clients write books, especially if they're in a consulting business, is for the credibility and authority that it provides. 
okay? A lot of people like to write books because they just would be like, mama, look, I'm published. Mama, I'm on Amazon. And I get that, and that's cool. But from a business aspect, oftentimes writing a book and becoming an author establishes you and gives you credibility in the market. So I encourage my clients, you need to write a book so you can have some authority. Some place people can buy a book and say, wow, they wrote a book on this. They're, they're, people perceive it that way, okay? And I've authored three books myself, and I've done the same thing for the same exact reason, to position myself and have credibility, because people are in awe when you write a book, yeah. right? So some examples of supporting content, and I'm gonna go through some of the content that I use to help establish my brand in that authority, celebrity type of way that allowed me to be able to charge top dollar, because I am on the higher end in my market. People always say, well, I don't know where I should price myself. You're always gonna have people at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom. I push everyone to go for the top. Make your coins, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna show you some of the things that I've done to leverage that. Um, I told you that I do this live event every year, and I've done it from like 2009 to like right up before the pandemic. I do a three-day live event called the Extreme Women Entrepreneurs Event. And um, Stedman Graham comes to speak at my events, Oprah's boyfriend, Stedman, comes to speak at my events, and he's come twice, and I leverage the power of Stedman because who do you think of when I say Stedman? Oprah. Right. So when people see Stedman, they think Oprah. So that's celebrity attachment that I'm using, right? So people are like, wow, Stedman, Oprah's boyfriend, poor Stedman, gotta be known as Oprah's boyfriend. He's a very accomplished man, it always was. Um, but it is what it is, right? Um, and people see Stedman at my events, and they equate that with Oprah. So that's a way that I use positioning with Stedman. And plus, we teach some of the same stuff. So he'll come to my events, and when, when Stedman's doing his talk, he will edify me and talk about me to my crowd, right? He'll talk about me to my crowd, further establishing my credibility. We've done audio series together. We've been on calls together teaching stuff, because we do, like I said, teach some of the same stuff on branding. And I leverage Stedman and Oprah as well. And one of the cool things about Stedman, because he speaks for Fortune 500 companies and corporations all the time, and he wasn't used to speaking at smaller events like mine with all black women entrepreneurs. And when he got in the room, which he never does, he doesn't talk about Oprah when he's out, because you know that's what people want him to do, but he's his own person. But when he got in the room at my events and saw all those black women, he was like, I feel compelled to tell you how Oprah thinks when she's making decisions. And he started giving us gems and, and dropping all this knowledge of what side of the brain she thinks when she's, it was just amazing. Just an amazing experience to have him there doing that. Um, when I'm booked to speak certain places, I make sure I take pictures with certain people. So like an event that I'm at, Susie Orman is booked to speak and I'm booked to speak. And so I make sure there's pictures of me and Susie Orman. I'm sharing, sharing the stage with Susie Orman. That's attaching to someone with a way bigger name than myself. See how that works to further establish my credibility? Oh, Vicki's got Stedman speaking. She speaks on stages with Susie Orman. I've done the same thing with Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. Pictures with Barbara. She's booked to speak, I'm booked to speak. I use that celebrity attachment as well to further position myself and allow me to charge top dollar because of my attachment to other people, okay? You guys see how that works? Yeah. So from there, when people see that, it attracts opportunity. It attracts money, people see you. Um, I've been on several magazine covers because of it. Like we was talking about when I launched my, uh, my cosmetic line, I did that with Shantae Moore, who's a friend of mine, but using her as a celebrity face gives my brand credibility. Robin Dixon from Real Housewives of Potomac, for anyone who's a housewives junkie, that's also my girlfriend. And with my cosmetic line, I've done collaborations with her where she'll come out with a line through my company. That's celebrity attachment, attaching to Bravo and their millions of viewers to give my little uh, cosmetic company a bigger audience and more credibility, okay? Because when people are looking to buy from you, like I said, if they don't know who you are, they don't trust you. But if you have a celebrity behind it and they see them on TV all the time, it gives you instant credibility. Okay, so you see how I do that? All right, so I'm gonna tell you <laughs> a story about how I used the things that I've learned for branding and positioning to get some things done. I have a vet women veterans organization that I work with every year, and she was being honored by the BET honors. You know the BET honors that they do? She was an honoree because of the work that she does with women veterans. And because of the work that I always do with her, she was like, Vicki, 
I'm going to get you on the red carpet. I'm going to get you on the red carpet with the big, the big uh, journalist out there, and I want you to capture me walking the red carpet with my family and get interviews, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? But okay, I'm down. You know, I'll figure it out. So I'm trying to figure out how I can grab these interviews with all these big, big name news journalists who are going to be there. So I got my credentials. It was under my own brand. My credential says Superwoman Lifestyle TV. But what happens on a red carpet like that, for big events like that, is they put the mainstream media at the front of the line. And they put the nobodies like me in the back. And they're with their publicists who are directing them who to speak to. Oh, that's a big name. Go talk to them. Give them an interview. Get them an interview at the front. By the time they're at the back, they're tired. They're done. And, they, and you're nobody anyway at the back of the line, right? So I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to get these interviews? So ahead of time, I thought about it. Again, using the knowledge that I have and what I've learned about positioning and branding and trying to stand out from people. And I knew that the journalists were just going to be in jeans, just grabbing interviews. They were going to be dressed down. So I had a gown made by a designer. <laughs> I had my makeup team give you makeup and hair, the whole nine yards, so that I stood out as a person doing the interviews, even though I'm at the back of the line. Yeah. All these other big name journalists, they're just there working in their sweats and their jeans grabbing interviews because they're not, you know, they're not really on camera so much. And so by the time they got to the end of the line, I'm, and I can be aggressive. I'm <laughs> sticking the microphone out, trying to grab the um, interviews or whatever. And I, what I noticed is they would, they would, they'd look me up and down and be like, oh my gosh, you look so nice. And they would stop. Yeah. I got interviews with all the honorees except Aretha Franklin that year. Oh. I interviewed Ice Cube. Um, I have an amazing highlight reel from that. But I was able to get all the interviews of the honorees and get them to stop just by strategizing ahead of time on how to make myself stand out, which is what branding is all about. Right. Okay. And when you have these skill sets, you think ahead of time about how can I do this? How can I get this done? Mm -hmm. So I was able to grab those, um, those, <laughs> those interviews by uh, outdressing the, uh, the big name journalist. <laughs> so that's just the, yeah, that was just a lesson, lesson on how I did that. Another opportunity that came my way, um, I got an email from the Think Factory Media. This was years ago. And they were talking about how they were, you know, Millionaire Matchmaker, the TV show Millionaire Matchmaker with Patty Stanger. They were looking to cast some people for the show in my area. And they were like, we, we've looked at you. We've looked at everything you have going on. You look super successful. And you have the look that we want. And we want you to be on Million Ma Millionaire Matchmaker if you're not married. But I was married. Mess me all up. Mess me all up. So, <laughs> but I use that as an example. Um, of how you're attracting opportunity when your positioning and your branding is in place. When people are looking for you, opportunity comes to you when you have everything in place the right way. So that's just another example of how that worked out for me. So now that we've talked about branding and I've given you a, a general overview, I want to talk about lessons on being a black entrepreneur. Okay. Now, my initial brand was Superwoman Lifestyle, and it was a big brand geared towards teaching women how to build and grow six and seven figure businesses. And while I, my brand was designed to include, you know, women, I wasn't excluding any race or anything, no matter what I did, guess who were the only people coming to me? Somebody said it? Black women. This is years and years of this. No matter what, it was still all black women. And why was that? It's because black women identified with me and the uh, non-melanated women did not. <laughs> OK? And the only time that I would get clients who weren't black was from speaking on stages of my white counterparts. Because then they could edify me and make me the OK black person to buy from. So as long as I was on their stage and it was kind of like, oh, she's good, she's good, then they would buy from me. But that's the only way, OK? And so I was, you know, collecting those checks and doing that. But after a while, I realized that I, I, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't need their validation. You, you know what I'm saying? I don't need to do that anymore. So I stopped marketing to just women in general. And I targeted my efforts to black women, which is why I rebranded from Superwoman Lifestyle to Black Women Lifestyle. Yeah. Because um, I want to serve people who don't hesitate yeah. to want to work with me because of the color of my skin. You can hesitate for other reasons. <laughs> but for the color of my skin, I didn't want to do that anymore. So that's why I rebranded to Black Women Lifestyle. And let me tell you, it feels so good. 
So if you have a product or service that you're marketing now and you realize the only people buying from you are black, even though you didn't set out to do that, then you don't have to feel any shame in, in niching down and speaking to black people purposely, okay, intentionally. And it took me years to throw in the towel on that, but there's enough of us that it just doesn't matter, okay? Given the overall state of the world right now and how our elected officials are now openly racist um, because their constituents love to hear their language, they love to see, they love to hear it, so many black business owners are now supporting black business. Have we not seen an uptick on black business supporting black business because of what's going on? We've banded together, right? We've banded together. Black men supporting black men, black women supporting black women, and vice versa. There's a huge uptick in support because we've, got, we've been like, what is going on here? Yeah. And so we've kind of like all come together now. So it's a great time to do that and not have to feel any type of way about it. And there's another lesson that I've learned, and this is very important I wanna remind everyone of. When you see a black business, a black person with a, a business that charges more for their products or service than their Asian or white counterparts, it's not because they want to, it's because they have to. I had a client in Atlanta who owned a beauty supply store. And when she goes to buy her products, there's a monopoly from the Asian people on where you buy your products from. And they're not selling those products to her for the same amount they're selling to the Asian um, beauty store owners. So she has to charge more to profit. And if we don't understand that, we just think, oh, that's why black people are so greedy. I can get that up the store from the Asian people. We have to stop doing that. And it comes from educating to understand why we're charging more. It's not to be greedy. It's not for that reason. It's because it's the only way we can profit because they're not giving those products to us at the same cost. And once we know that, we can understand and say, you know what? I'm going to still support this sister or brother. Understanding what's going on in their market. But a lot of people don't know that, so please spread the word on that. People don't understand behind the scenes a lot of time in the industry. So please, you know, pass that word along. That's really, really important. And the, and the other lesson I wanted to talk about <laughs> was how we're just a little bit way too hard on our own. Um, I hear it and you see it all the time on social media. We're always saying, that's why I hate buying from black business because X, Y, Z went wrong. When you're in business, some stuff is gonna go wrong no matter what color the business owners are. When you're in business, stuff is going to go wrong. It is a fact and it is a given, yeah. no matter what. And if you ever notice, if you're on social media, companies, huge companies have uh, people dedicated to fielding customer service inquiries on Twitter, everywhere. Oh my gosh, you didn't get your order, please DM us your, your number, blah, blah, blah. It goes on all the time because stuff goes wrong. Okay, so it's not just black businesses that stuff is going wrong in. You give people a chance to correct their errors, understanding it's just a part of business. Now there's good and bad businesses owned by all races and you don't have to give them your money and you shouldn't give them your money. But the ones who are doing a good job who make a mistake, give them a chance to correct the mistake and don't chalk it up to them just being a black business. Okay, because you don't hear white people or other people saying, oh, that's why I can't, that's why I don't buy from these white companies. <laughs> We're the only ones doing that. Yeah, and we have to stop doing that and give each other a break and understand that it's just a part of business. I don't know why we have this, um, we're just, just super, super, super hard on each other. And then finally, I wanna talk a little bit about balance. <laughs> there is no such thing as balance. <laughs> We try, we try, we try, and we fail. How many people are failing that balance? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, everyone's feeling that balance, right? And I talk a lot about balance, and I always have, and what I finally realized is that if, you, if you're totally in balance, that means you're perfect, and it just doesn't exist. Um, we come up with ways and we do our best, but something's always gonna fall short. The biggest thing I can tell you is not to compare yourself to other people, and I think that's where it comes from a lot of time the comparison to other people. If I only have one child that's 18, I'm gonna be able to move a lot different from another woman who has three or four kids. So she shouldn't look at me and say, oh my gosh, Vicky's got it all together. Look at her here and look at her there and doing this and the other and feel bad about herself because our circumstances are different. But that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing all the time when it comes to balance. We see someone moving who looks like they have it all together and it's just not like that. Yeah. What you have to do is you have to decide what balance looks like to you and your family and what makes you feel satisfied at the end of each day. Yes. And stop comparing yourself to what you see someone else doing because it's just, it's just, that just does not work. We've all been there and done that because everybody can make everything look good. 
I mean, we're all crying behind the scenes somewhere or another, right? If we keep it real, okay? So my, my biggest point on balance is to urge you to just decide what that looks like for you, what leaves you feeling satisfied and accomplished at the end of the day, given your circumstances and what you have going on, and forget about looking at everybody else, okay? So branding done right, let's get these things together. Like I said, there's a lot of information going around about branding. But if you focus on a strong position in your market and you only focus on the people who are attracted to what you do, like Bishop does or like Planet Fitness does, a correctly positioned brand, you can command top dollar and do the things to support it and justify it. And you can make, you can make your money, okay? So in conclusion, I want you to explore this. As I've talked today, I want you to think about, do you think you need a, need a brand because you don't have one? Right now, you might be like, gosh, I don't even have an identity for my business. I don't even know what I stand for. So think about that. Or if you do have one, are you unable to monetize it, which may be a clue that it's not working. And there's nothing, you can't keep doing something that doesn't work because that's the definition of what? Thank you, okay? So do you feel your brand of position is attracting the wrong people? If you're getting a bunch of people that you just cannot stand working with, we have a problem. Because when you become a business owner or entrepreneur, part of the allure of all that is being able to like do your own thing and, and, and work within your own parameters. And that includes working with people you enjoy working with, okay? Not like when you're going to your nine to five and you don't have any choice. Been there, done that. It's very different when you're an entrepreneur. You don't wanna go back into that scenario. You wanna be able to control things as an entrepreneur, okay? Do you feel your brand needs some tweaking or reinvention? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with starting over. There's nothing wrong with starting over. Do you want a more authentic brand? As I talked about authenticity, do you feel like, yeah, you know, I'm not being me. This isn't who I am. I want to pop off a little bit, <laughs> right? So you think about, you know, if your brand needs to be a little more authentic because the more authentic you are, the better you're able to sell yourself, your products, and your services. When you feel good about what you do, it is truly who you are. You feel good about selling because selling is hard for people. Sell everyone wants to be in business, but everyone's scared to sell their stuff. And part of it is because you don't feel totally good about what you're doing for whatever reason. But I promise you, some of the sales resistance that you feel and some of the apprehension you have when it comes to selling will go away when you are truly selling something you feel is authentically you. And you feel good about talking about it and people consuming it. You'll become a sales whiz when that happens. So I want you to think about some of the things we talked about today and get started making some tweaks and some changes, okay? And so I want to know, does anybody have any questions on anything that I covered today or anything about any business that they're in right now? If I can answer it, I will. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know because I'm not one of those people trying to make up answers and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> Okay. Anyway, with that being said, um, I think I want to focus on the brand. Um, is a brand just a name? Or, and what's the difference between brand hopping and starting over? Okay, so brand hopping is when you're literally every other week or month coming up with a different idea and you want to be someone new. I want to be this and I want to be that. And it's like it's happening all the time. Starting over is when you've already been doing something that's not working and you finally say, you know what, this isn't working so I need to rebrand and I want to rebrand myself. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, okay? And a brand is like your identity in the marketplace. But like I said, when people are doing, a bunch of people are doing the same thing you do, you want to attract people who kind of know what you stand for. Like I was saying with myself, using myself as an example, when people are deciding which coaching events or live events to go to, they know if they come to my event, they're gonna come learn hardcore income generating skills and I'm gonna like poo poo all over all that purpose and passion talk. And they know that, right? They're like, you know, and I've had people say like, oh, you're, you're that, you, you do the money making skills, you do the money making skills. And that's kind of how you know when your brand is working because people will come up to you, they'll recognize you and they know who you are because of what you stand for in your business. Or I'll get people who say, I finally came to your event because I heard your messages and I'm one of those people who spent so much money on purpose and passion and motivation, I realized I still don't know what to do to generate income, so I'm finally here. That's my identity in the market and I do so many things to, to make that identity like I push that out to the world, and you know, there's a lot of stuff you have to do to do that, but that's kind of when you ask me what a brand is, it's your identity. When people hear your name, they know, oh, I know what they do. I know what they teach. I know what they stand for. 
in the in a either you know that's either your person or it's not. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is, are, are people paying you for this service? I will be paying for the service, but it's not, I'm not selling a product. But you're selling a service. Selling a service. Yes, as long as you're selling something, whether it's a, a, a service or a product, then you want to have an identity and a brand. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's a good question. It's a good question because that's why I always say um, a product or service. You know, service. I, I do a service. You know, I, I'm selling. You know, um, you know, my live events or whatever. Whatever. Some people may sell hamburgers somewhere or whatever. You know, it's it's all across the board. But regardless of what it is, you're typically going to have whether you're selling a product or service, you're going to have competitors, and you're going to want to figure out a way to stand out in your crowded market. Okay. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so what most people do is when they have more than one business is they try to jam them all together. Like you ever see that on a card, like I do hair and I'm a limousine service and I <laughs> like all this stuff that doesn't, right, you don't wanna do that because then you look like a jack of all trades who's just kinda all over the place. Yeah, confused, exactly, thank you. That's right, confused. So if you have separate businesses, you wanna brand them differently and keep them separate. You don't wanna have your website talking about all this different stuff you do. Each thing has to be separated or you're gonna cause that confusion in the market. And a lot of people do that because it's easier. Let me just throw everything I do on one business card. Let me throw it all on one website. But you look insane to people. I'm telling you, they won't tell you, they're just not gonna call you. They're not gonna tell you, they're just not calling you because you're a hairdresser and a locksmith and a bus driver. And they're just like, this is crazy. They don't, people love for you to specialize in what they need. So never be afraid to niche down to what you, exactly what you do. People wanna know that you specialize in what they need. So it's a good question. What y'all laughing at, Erin? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I think my name is a big part of my brand. Okay. Mm -hmm, absolutely, and you have to make a decision. Like, there's some businesses where you're going to be the face of your brand. I'm definitely the face of my brand, but there's some businesses that just they brand, but they don't brand themselves. And it depends on what the business is and what you're trying to do. A lot of people get into business and they don't want to brand themselves because they get into business with the goal of selling it down the road. And if you're the face of your brand and you're what everyone's buying into, you're never gonna be able to get out of that business and just sell it because they want you. Because when you sell it, you wanna be out and just get your money. But they want you because you've blown yourself up so big. And if you're not a part of it, it's not as attractive. So deciding on whether to brand your name or, or just you know the business, it depends on what your ultimate goal is. Mm -hmm. Everybody good? Was this helpful? Oh, it made sense? Yeah. Okay, well, good. I'm glad to help the people of Springfield out. Love it. See, Mom, good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs>I thought y'all would um I thought y'all would have some more questions, but I'm sure I know what y'all do. Y'all gonna sneak up after it's over with <laughs> and then hold her up over here for an hour and ask her all them questions that you wouldn't ask now. Uh, one more round of applause for Dr. Vicki Irvin. <laughs> Great information. Um, and I'm Sure, that's going to help some of you entrepreneurs and those of you who are business owners um, uh, to market yourself and to create your brand and to make some money. Uh, yeah, somebody laughing, but that's what it's about, right? Amen. <laughs> make some money.
So listen, we, we are um, at the point of our um, award ceremony. Um, I got an order for these, babe. There's, uh, uh, ladies first. Um, and we recognize individuals in the community, uh, usually those unsung heroes, those folks that are doing great things that don't necessarily get recognize all of the time and so we take the time and opportunity to to recognize them and we normally do one per lecture uh, but the committee got together and did something different this year um, and so we're going to be recognizing three individuals on tonight um, the first awardee and I'm going to ask if she would come is Dr. Shakina Williams. <laughs> All right, she is the executive director of the Frank and Eileen Center for Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership at Babson College, an innovator, thought leader, change maker, yes, right. DEI advocate, who refuses to accept the status quo. Yes. She's got a, a passion to propel women entrepreneurs to new levels of success, pushes boundaries, opens doors, shapes the future for entrepreneurs and education through her impactful vision. Um, she is a graduate of Babson College, uh, also Oklahoma City University with a master's degree and Capella University with a doctorate. Uh, and so she's not one of those um, crackerjack box doctors. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. That's, that's one of my pet <laughs> peeves. Uh, and she's also a member of Spring of Hope, Church of God in Christ. And so we're proud to Award her. You can come on up a little higher, sis. <laughs> Spring of Hope Church Lift Every Voice Community Service Award presented to Dr. Shakina Williams for Outstanding Leadership and Community Service, April 12, 2023. Bishop Talbert Swan, the second senior pastor. Congratulations. Thank you. Was not prepared. Oh, well, always ready to say a few words. Thank you, Bishop, and thank you, First Lady, and for the honor, and also the committee as well. I just want to give thanks to God um, for just to be able to stand here today and receive this award. Um, as Bishop mentioned, is many times when you you're from a town, and you're not recognized. But I'm just really grateful for the recognition. Thank you for my family and my friends being in the room today. I see my god sister in the back as well, Michelle. Um, and then most importantly, I want to thank my mom for holding it down because all that I do will be able to travel the world. My mother really holds, down, holds it down for me. And um, I think about um, the many success and I want to say this public it, publicly because many people probably ask like, why is she at Springer Hole? What is the connection to the Swan family? And I just really, really think Mr. Fred Swan, who is Bishop and also Frida's dad, um, when my father passed away, he really stepped in and was a father figure to me and made sure um, I completed my doctorate and every single week, and I would think multiple times during the week, he called me to encourage me. So I definitely encourage anyone, entrepreneur, a rising leader in the community, um, it's definitely important to have a mentor um, that's definitely going to push you. And uh, Mr. Fred Swan was that person that stood in the gap when my father passed away. And I just want to publicly say that. And for thanking the bishop and also Frida, yes, um, for sharing their dad with me, because he was, um, he's a really um, busy person. But, um, you know, we, we, 
it was just a great time for both my mom and I. And again, thank you, the committee, for Lift Every Voice. I continue to spread my voice around the world, promoting women from diverse backgrounds and also industries, but most importantly, our black women entrepreneurs. And as the President Babson says, I'm a very bold person, but I'm very, um, what word did he use? I'm easy to approach. So <laughs> I'm a, really a secret storm at Babson, but I definitely use my privilege and also my voice to advance all women, particularly black women entrepreneurs. So thank you very much. One more round of applause, Dr. Williams. I want to call up my, my friend and my brother for over 40 years now, and that is Minister Johnny Muhammad. <clears throat> and we go way, 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 way back when I was a freshman at UMass. Uh, he came up to pledge me um, with the brothers from AIC. Uh, but more than being a big brother, he was a, he was a role model um, from way back then. He was one of those brothers who always had sage wisdom, um, who always looked out for us, uh, who was always there standing in the gap. When I came back from college, uh, he was here working in the community in Springfield. Um, he's been a voice for justice. He's been a, he's been a voice um, against uh, all of the social ills that plague our community. Uh, he's been that example of being a family man, a father, and a husband, and a brother. Um, and in some dark times, even in my life, when uh, I was going through threats against my life and all those things. It was always uh, Brother Johnny and uh, the men of the nation who stood with me, even though I was a, even though I was a Christian, we were brothers. Yes. Uh, our faith Our faith never separated us. Um, and I'm, I'm so proud to be able to uh, give him this award that he's so deserves um, um, one who has been a long-standing member in this community who has stood for our people and I want to thank you my brother I love you dearly and we're honored to award you on tonight uh, this uh, Spring of Hope Church Lift Every Voice Community Service Award presented to Brother Minister Johnny Muhammad for outstanding leadership and community service April 12 2023 <laughs> In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness to the oneness of God. I bear witness to all the prophets of God, and I bear witness to the people of God. I'd like to greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, in our nation's green words of peace, of assalamu alaikum. For those of you who are unfamiliar with those words, they simply mean, peace be unto you. Ramadan Mubarak to my Muslim brothers and sisters, which means blessed Ramadan. To my beloved brother, Bishop Swan, our first lady, to the Lift Every Voice Committee, I thank you. I thank you for this wonderful honor, but first I have to give thanks and glory to Almighty God for this opportunity. I thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for allowing me to serve as his student minister here in the city of Springfield. I thank you, my brothers and sisters here in the city of Springfield. You know, um, I've been blessed to be in Springfield for 45 years now. I came here as a young man at the age of 17 from Passaic, New Jersey. 
And I remember when I was a freshman student at American International College, I stood on State Street and I said, wow, this is a beautiful place to raise a family. I drank the water and never left. <laughs> but when I made that statement, it proved to be true. We are a beautiful people. We are a beautiful community. Yeah. I have had the honor and privilege of meeting so many wonderful people here in the city of Springfield. And one thing I have to say, brothers and sisters, is that we have to come together. The time is now. Yes. The time is now. It's not tomorrow, it's now. now. In the scriptures in the Bible, it says, love ye one another as I have loved you. I am so grateful to be a servant, not a leader, but a servant, a servant to my people and to our community. You know, my wife always says, why are you always starting something? <laughs> but you know, in truth, brothers and sisters, someone always had their hand on me from the time I was a little boy all the way up into my adulthood, and even to this day. So I like to give back, and that's one thing that we need to do, is give back to one another. In my closing, there's a beautiful song that's out by a man by the name of Gregory Porter. And it goes, I'm not gonna sing it, but it goes, take me to the alley, take me to the afflicted ones. And that's what we have to do. Go to the alley where our people are. Go to those who are afflicted so that we can help them get on their feet so that we can become the great community and the great people that we truly are. Lastly, I just wanna say thank you to my family, to my son Joshua, to my daughter Jamila, to my daughter Jane, to my daughter Valencia, to my grandbaby Luna Noor, but most of all, I want to say thank you to my beautiful wife, Sister Michelle. Yes. Because all praise is due to Allah. I could not be the man that God created me to be without you understanding my mission, supporting my mission, being in front of me, being beside me, being in front of me, being, be being my strength. I want to thank you. I love you. May God continue to bless us and our family. May God continue to bless our community. Let's come together, brothers and sisters, as one. We're one people. That's what I love about this brother right here, because there's no division. This is my home. Yes. The mosque is his home. Yes. We're family. That's right. When the call is made, we come. That's right. And that's what we have to do. We have to come for one another. Thank you. May Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Now, I, I held this award for the final one because um, he takes the pictures. <laughs> and I was trying to figure out who was going to take the picture <laughs> when we gave him an award. Uh, but I guess he's got that all figured out. Um, our next awardee is Mr. Ed Cohen. Now, now, the, the, the uniqueness, the uniqueness of this setting and Lift Every Voice is in the same setting where we can give uh, the, the minister from Muhammad's Mosque an award. Right after it, we can give a man named Cohen an award <laughs> in the same setting. Um, he has chronicled the experience of black people throughout the Pioneer Valley for decades. Um, 
He's chronicled the artwork of Nelson Stevens and, and, and some of our great educators at the University of Massachusetts and beyond. He's, he's chronicled uh, the events of our churches, of our families, of our children growing up, our graduations, our block parties, our you name it, Ed has been there. Uh, and, and, and Ed has become an honorary um, he's one of those guys, you know, we always talk about who's invited to the cookout. Um, um, usually we hire Ed to come to the cookout. Uh, and with, whatever cookout he goes to, Ed is going to make him a plate. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, he's, he's steeped in black culture. Um, and so I was, I was pleased when the committee came back and offered his name uh, as an award recipient because the work that he does uh, is very valuable in terms of passing down uh, our history, our culture, uh, the information about what we've done in our communities and in our families. Uh, and it reads as follows, the Spring of Hope Church Lift Every Voice Community Service Award presented to Mr. Edward Cohen Outstanding Leadership and Community Service, April 12, 2023. Bishop Talbert Swan II, Senior Pastor. And for the first time, um, somebody else is going to take some pictures at Lift Every Voice. Some notes. Some notes. Oh, yeah, so I have some notes here. So the first thing I want to um, thank is um, uh, Bishop Talbot Swan the first. This picture's right up there in the wall. And his spirit, his spirit is in the building. You know, you can feel it, close your eyes, you can feel the spirit. And um, second thing I'd like to say is I'd like to um, talk about the first experience I had w w with the Swan family. So I, I, was, um, I was supposed to take pictures at an event. Um, and my car broke down. So I, went, I walked over to Route 9 in, in Amherst, stuck on my thumb, I was there for about an hour. <laughs> then all of a sudden this big car uh, pulls up and they stop to give me a ride. It was a Lorraine, Lorraine and Fred Swan. And they drove me right there and they dropped me off to the event. So that was, that was the first experience with um, the Swan family. That was way back in the day, I'm not sure of the year, but. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is every Friday at 9 a.m., um, I listen to the Black, Lo Black Love Experience by, um, by uh, Ben Swan Sr. That was before he was state rep, elected like state rep. Um, then I um, also like to, uh, the first time I really had an experience with Bishop Talbot Swan II was uh, Reverend Swan, and uh, it was an event at, um, in the courthouse where this, this uh, rabble-rousing woman was, um, was um, arrested and maced by the, by the police. So um, it was way back in the day. So it turned out that, you know, so she comes up in this, this elderly, frail woman, you know, who was maced and arrested by the police and uh, uh, being escorted by uh, Reverend Talbot Swan um, the second. Um, and the, the, the Plunkett, Miss, Mrs. Yes. Plunkett, yeah. you remember that? Yeah. Right, that was the first experience and, and I've admired him ever since. Oh. Yeah, so um, that's, and this is the house of the good, good trouble. Yeah. You know, so, and we, we really need a lot of good trouble these days. Yeah. So um, that's about it, B Bishop. <laughs> sorry, sorry, ran out of stuff to say. And so First Lady, that's it, that's my speech. Thank you, thank you all for coming. I'm, I'm good. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. You got to take your award with oh, you. Oh, yeah, my award. <laughs> Come on, round of applause for all three of our awardees. Come on, uh, Z. 
We're sh this is one of our uh, business owners and entrepreneurs in the um, community. Come right on up, come right on up. Well, come on up. Well, good evening, everyone. And this is certainly unexpected. I passed a note to Ayana and said that on behalf of the Olive Tree Bookstore, we would love to give our gift certificates to the winners of the Black Trivia Contest this afternoon. So I expected Ayana to present this, but I certainly would like to congratulate the three winners who answered those uh, challenging questions and have you come over to the bookstore, pick out a gift of your choice, because as, Bi as, as Bishop Swan said, and as Minister Johnny said, we're all family. We're all family. So please come over, pick out what you want. Um, there's a variety, and we truly love our community, so we are able to do this. Thank you very much. Olive Tree Bookstore. Olive Tree, what's the address? 97 Hancock Street, Olive Tree Bookstore, Ms. Z. Johnson. And the rest of y'all go on by there too. All right. Uh, readers still make leaders. And I'm not going to ask y'all what's the last book you read. All right. Listen, thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you for your support throughout the series. This is our final iteration, um, our fourth of the season of Lift Every Voice Lecture Series, and we've been doing this now, what's this, 13 years? Um, and so um, we'll see what the Lord says about next year. If, if y'all come back and support, we'll do it again, and we'll bring some more great speakers in as well. Stand to your feet. I'm going to ask my brother, uh, Minister Johnny, if you would come and give us a benedictory prayer. Say amen for First Lady. Amen. Say amen for Ed, for Minister Johnny, uh, for Dr. Williams, and for those who answered the question. If I'd have known we were getting uh, free books, I would have answered some of them questions. Attention prayer. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Master, dear judgment in which we now live, the only we serve, the only we seek for thine aid and help. O oh Allah, guide us along the straight path. The path which I bestowed thy favor is not the path that wrath has been brought down, nor are those who go astray after they've heard thy teachings. O oh Allah, we beseech thy help and we ask for thy mercy. For we believe in thee and trust in thee for all of our needs. Will help us in thy cause with the apostle. Please grant to us success. Amen. Amen. Have a great evening. Now y'all can come ask all the questions you didn't ask. <laughs>